JavaScript has functions that are first-class citizens. You may have heard this before about JavaScript functions, but what does it really mean? That is what I want to explore in this tutorial. First, when we use the term first-class, we need to explain what that means. I think the best definition I have found of first-class functions was given by Michael Fogus in his book, Functional JavaScript. So let's take a look at that definition. Michael Fogus had this to say, the term first class means that something is just a value. A first class function is one that can go anywhere that any other value can go. There are few to no restrictions. So the key idea here is that first class functions are treated as values. Now Michael goes on to explain that a number is surely a first class thing. It is a value. And therefore, a first class function should have a similar nature as a number. He then went through six examples where a number can be used in code and shows how a function can be used exactly the same way. And I want to show those examples because to me, they teach the first class nature of functions in JavaScript better than anything else I have read. So let's get started and take a look at those examples. So first off, a number can be stored in a variable and so can a function. Let's look at that. So here's a variable with the number 28 stored in it. Here's a variable with a function stored in it. When you place a variable like this in a function, it's termed a function expression as opposed to a function declaration. Put a semicolon at the end, and then we can invoke that function as well. I have another tutorial where I talk about function expressions versus function declarations, and I'll include a link to that in the description section of this tutorial. So here we've stored a number in a variable, we've stored a function in a variable. And of course, refresh that, we can invoke that function by simply putting parentheses at the end of the variable, which is what we've done here. That's situation one where a function can be placed in the same type of setting as a number. All right, next, a number can be stored in an array, and so can a function. So let's create an array here. Now first we'll store a number in that array. Next, we will store a function. This will be an anonymous function. No name will be associated with it. There's our function inside the array. Now, let's go ahead and invoke it. So since it's in the second position of that array, we would enter a one and then to invoke the function, we simply put parentheses at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. I will refresh. Here we have hello and then hi from an array. So that's the second example. Example number three, a number can be stored in an object property and so can a function. Now you've probably seen that many times. We generally call them methods when a function is stored in an object property, but let's take a look at it. OBJ equals, and then I'll create an object using object literal notation. And the very first property simply be num and we'll place 20 in it. Second property be funct and we'll place a function in that one. Hello from an object. Now to invoke that, we simply indicate the object, use the dot syntax to indicate which property, and because it is a function, we put parentheses after it. So let's refresh and see that. Hello from an object. So there was our third example. The fourth example is a number can be created as needed, and in a sense, so can a function. For example, we could create a function and invoke it at once. 
that type of function is called an immediately invoke function expression. So if we had an expression like this, console.log, and we're going to add 28 to something else. What are we going to add it to? Well, let's add a function in the same place we would add a number. This will be an anonymous function. And we'll have it return 10. Now, to cause it to invoke immediately, we surround it in parentheses. And then we put two parentheses to invoke it. All right, let's see what we get with this. And there we get 38. So we put a function in the same place we would put a number for an expression. All right, example number six is a number can be passed to a function, and so can a function be passed to a function. So let's look at that. We're going to create a function. We're going to call this add to. We'll set that equal to function. And then we have two parameters we're going to pass in. One is a number. The other is actually a function. Then we'll simply log to the console num plus fn, the function, but we're going to invoke it. So we get whatever is returned from that function. OK, so now let's go ahead and call that. So add 2, and let's pass in 28. And then the second thing we're passing in is a function. And this function will return 28. All right, save that, and let's see how that one works. 56, there we go, 28 plus 28 is 56. So in this case, we passed a function into another function, this add to function, pass it into this parameter here, and then we invoke that parameter as a part of this add to function. All right, example six, the last example that helps illustrate first class functions in JavaScript. In this one, a number can be returned from a function, and so can a function. So this time, we'll be returning a function. So first, I want to create a function that returns a number. So this will be pretty straightforward. We simply use a return statement and indicate that we want to return a number. Now, let's create a function that returns a function. Same way, we're going to do return, but this time we're returning a function. And what this is going to return is a function that prints out console.log hello for last time. So that's the function that gets returned. Now we'll create a variable in which we'll store the function as returned. And we will invoke return fun. So now new fun will have a function inside of that. To invoke that function, we simply do new fun and parentheses after it to invoke it. Obviously, if we wanted to return the number, I think that's pretty straightforward, so we won't throw that in. But we would set a variable equal to this function, which we invoked. All right, let's take a look how this works, the last one. Whoops, I need to save, jump out, refresh, hello for the last time. So that is the sixth example. So really quick review. First, a number can be stored in a variable, and so can a function. That was the first example we did. The second example is a number can be stored in an array, and so can a function. Third example, a number can be stored in the property of an object, and so can a function. We saw that. Then a number could be created as needed as a part of an expression, and so can a function. So we did an expression with both a number and a function in it. And that type of function was called an iffy. Fifth example, a number can be passed to a function. And we can also pass a function to a function. And finally, a number can be returned from a function. And so can a function be returned from a function. So even if you understood first class functions, 
to begin with. Hopefully that helped illustrate in a little more detail what first class functions are. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like the video. You can visit our website for a list of all the tutorials we've created on JavaScript and find other tutorials that might be helpful to you. To immediately access another tutorial from our YouTube channel, click the video link in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We release new tutorials every week. And to visit our website, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.